Hey guys, Chase here. This is going to be the first episode in a series I want to call Inside the Helmet. In this series, I'm going to be taking footage that I have, and I'm going to run through it, and I'm going to explain what was going through my head during the situation. I'm going to draw over the screen, and hopefully this will help everybody see what I saw. Well, my goal for this series will be is hopefully give you guys a new insight into situations you have to deal with as a motorcyclist, and for new riders to see how I deal with situations that are thrown at me, and potentially learn from them. For the first episode, we're going to be looking at the Ducati crash footage. If you aren't familiar with it, well, here, I'll show you the outcome. So, yeah, that's what happened. Now let's go back and review what I was thinking in the scenario so we can get a better understanding of what was going through my head. Guys, to start off, I wanted to mention that I got a ton of flack in the original video because of my speed and because I blurted it out. Well, in this video, we're going to see everything. So, keep an eye on the speedo down at the bottom. The road we're on is a 35 mile per hour road. Also, throughout this video, keep an eye on this white van. We're going to be traveling around the same speed going down the same road, so keep an eye on that as this video continues. Alright guys, it's at this point you can first see the taxi, right? Keep an eye on that. Also, let's note that I do have a green light. So at this point, I'm just going down this road. I see a taxi pull out. I see I have a green light, but I am assuming a taxi is going to stop and look for traffic. You shouldn't make assumptions, but let's just keep an eye on this kind of stuff. Alright, so guys, at this point you can hear me let off the throttle. I see the taxi pull out, but I feel like this is another normal Atlanta taxi guy. He sees me coming, he's still going to go even though there's not enough space, but most of the time I'm assuming this taxi is going to go to this far outside lane and not get in my lane because obviously I'm on a red bike and I'm traveling down this lane. So I'm assuming he's going to go on this outside lane because <laughs> I have a green light and everything. So far. Up to this point in this entire video, nothing is out of the ordinary for me. Taxis like this drive like that all the time, so I'm not worried. I do let off the gas a little bit to give him enough time to get into that other lane, even though he shouldn't have gone with me that close. So at this point, I'm not worried at all. This is like normal everyday stuff. Alrighty, let's stop it here and let's analyze this whole situation because this, this area right here is when stuff starts getting real for me. So, at this point in the video, what I focus on is right there. I see his wheel, his front wheel is still pointing in that direction. So, at, this is the moment right here when I realize that we got a problem. Like something's about to go down and I'm not prepared for it. Here is what my brain does. My brain tells me I have three options. All right, there's three choices I have to, to stay alive. All right, so let's review each, uh, each option. Option one is, okay, there's a taxi here, I'm here, I have this far to equalize my distance, or equalize my speed to the taxi on a bike I don't have a lot of experience on. Yes, the bike has ABS. Yes, the bike can stop on a dime. But all of that doesn't matter if you're not used to the bike. So I'm not familiar enough with the bike to be able to slam on brakes. So the slam on brakes option is going to give me two things. What if I stop and the car behind me, like I can't, you can't really see it here, but what if that car is not paying attention enough to me and hits me in the back. That's something that can happen. So I can get rear-ended. What happens if I slow down too much and I lock the front wheel up? Yes, I have ABS, but once again, I'm not used to this bike. So what if I low side? Okay, those are all options that I feel like I have in option one. But I'm not used to the bike, so that makes me say no to option one. All right, so option two. Option two is, okay, I know that this whole lane is going to be taken up by this guy right here. So what if I take the bike and I go to the outside lane? That's option two. 
here's my reasons where I was like, option two is probably not the best idea. Because what I'm what I'm considering is risk versus reward. My reward is to not hit this taxi or get run over or anything. So that's my goal. That's my rewards in all these scenarios. My risk, if I go into the, that lane, what if I go into that lane too fast, like there's too much of a transition because we're already in, you know, if you can see the road is already turning. So I'm already in a turn. So I'm going to have to disengage that route to go to this outside route. What if I do that? I don't, I can't turn in enough or I hit some type of little debris in about this area and I low side, I could either run into this wall over here and all this stuff. Or what if a vehicle's coming and I, he runs into me when I'm low siding? So getting run over is a really big risk that I'm going if I'm that I'm taking by going this way. What I'm also thinking if I about jumping into this lane, where's the white van? Okay, because that white van we passed earlier, we were going the relatively same speed. Of course, I was going a little faster than him, but I don't know where he is. You know, what if I jump over here and this giant blue or the giant uh, white van just comes and I plow into him? So yeah, with the white van being somewhere behind me and potentially slipping out in this spot and getting run over by a car, that's going to be bad. I mean, that could result in the ultimate loss and that's death. So after all that, I X'd uh, scenario two totally out. All right, so this brings us to option three, which is I've got this mass sitting here. I've got space. I don't know how fast he's coming over, but there's enough space that I can get through there. With the way, with my experience with riding, I have the most experience doing this, taking this bike and shooting it through that gap with enough time before he comes over because this is a this is a relatively wide lane so he could e even be in this lane and i could still make it through and be okay obviously there are still negative scenario or there's negative options to this scenario you have i don't know if you guys can tell from right here this is a really jagged you know curb so obviously i don't want to hit the curb there are a lot of obstacles if i hit that curb there's also a van that's going to sandwich me in between this curb and the van. I don't want any of that to happen. But in the moment, I felt safest taking that option. This was after I considered options one, two, and then considering three. I X'd one, I X'd two, and I was like, all right, these are all bad options, but three is probably gonna be my best bet based on my experience with riding in the past. That's what we went for. Alrighty, so here we are. We've already chosen the path, we've gone down it, and now let's evaluate what made me go down. You can see, other than the, the mirror getting hit by the taxi side mirror, I would have made this fine, judging by the drift footage. But what we're going to have to do is jump to the GoPro footage to kind of see what happened that made me go down. Alright, it's from this shot that you're able to actually tell what happened. I'm going to replay this footage. Just this one little section. I want you to keep your eye on that handlebar right there. What happens with that handlebar is just the tiniest bit touches the front of the taxi. This area. What that does is send these handlebars that are normally flat and down like this, tilted up in this direction. Cause this is pushing, the taxi's pushing down on the handlebar. That little tap, moving the handlebars in that direction, shoots my wheel and the bike in this direction, and then auto corrects itself into the curb. So based on this little tab that we're about to see, the bike goes this way into the taxi and then corrects itself directly in the opposite direction as bikes do, which puts me right over here in the curb. So we're going to replay this footage real quick from the GoPro and let you watch this handlebar just barely nick the side of the, the front side of the taxi. 
So all of that put together puts me in the situation that you see here. This is where the bike first makes contact with the curb. At this point, the bike's out of my control and the bike's gonna go down. Obviously you can see the handlebars down there are pointed and all like totally into the curb. So we're going down at this point. All things considered though, I came out of this really well. If you look, I have what, a gate that I could have nailed with a tree and at this speed, I was going a lot faster than I was. I think I ended up like going down about right here. So if we take into consideration all the objects, I missed this whole gate, which would have been hit at a lot higher rate of speed. I missed this whole pole. There's another gate down there. All things considered, this distance from here to here slows me down enough to where I don't get hurt too bad. Obviously I had the, the damage to my knee and I had the shoulder problem from hitting, hitting this, this same type gate you know over here but all things considered I got really lucky I had my gear on you can see the jacket my icon overlord jacket I was geared up everything was in the right case to where I got hurt as little as possible um, I am thankful for everything that happened but just in this coming up section watch all of the things on this side of the screen you know that I could that could have been I could have been hit by impaled by all of the things are not good. Keep an eye on that while we finish up this video. Alright guys, well this is the end of uh, Inside the Helmet Episode 1. I hope that give, gave you a little more insight to like what was going through my head during the entire accident and what happened and you know what options I gave myself and how I reacted to the options I had. Um, if you like this video or you felt like you gained something from it, make sure you like it. And if you do, if I get enough likes on this, I'll try to keep doing these and, you know, make it a more regular series, you know, as things progress and as I learn things and things happen. So make sure you do. All right. So it's about, it's like this and then it goes down, then over, then there's a thumbs up thing. Yeah. Make sure you click that button. The good one. <laughs> and uh yeah if enough people like it i'll definitely i'll do more episodes of this you know as things horribly happen to me on the roadways but anyway thanks guys for watching i will see you guys on the next video stay safe out there because taxis be cray <laughs> bye guys